Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 21 to the power 22 and 22 to the power 21, and we're going to figure out which number is greater. Now, I'm going to start by using substitution. As you know, substitution is very powerful. So I'm going to call the first number A. So A equals 21 to the power 22, and B is equal to 22 to the power 21. And then I'm going to get rid of the exponents by using logarithms, and I'm going to be using base E. So when I write something like ln x, it just means that it is log x with base E. Okay, now let's go ahead and ln both sides. From here we get ln A equals ln 21 to the power 22. And when we move the exponent, we get ln A equals 22 times ln 21. We do the same thing here. ln B is equal to ln 22 to the power 21. And we get ln B is equal to 21 times ln 22. Great. So instead of comparing A and B, I'm going to, I'm going to be comparing ln A and ln B. Since these two quantities are not equal, one of them has to be greater than the other. So we're going to consider the following function next. Our function is going to be y equals ln x over x. Now you might be thinking, like, why am I considering this function? Because if you're trying to compare something like a time, you know, maybe I shouldn't use the a, b here because we, we already used it, but something like, if you have something like x ln y and y ln x, so let's say you're trying to compare these two numbers, right? You could basically do the following. You could divide both sides by y and by x, in other words, divide by x, y. Then you could also be comparing these two quantities. We don't know which one's greater, so I, I put a question mark. Make sense? That's why I'm considering this function. Great. Now, we're going to be looking at this function from a calculus standpoint. So let's go ahead and, and differentiate both sides. When I say calculus, it shouldn't be scary. Hopefully, it's, you're not scared by that. Uh, even if you don't know calculus, there are certain rules you can follow to differentiate a function. So let's go ahead and do that. This is um, quotient. This is a quotient, so I'm going to use the quotient rule. The derivative of the top, which is 1 over x, multiplied by the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, multiplied by the top function. And all of that is going to be divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so now we have the following. Let's simplify the derivative a little bit. This is going to cancel out. This gives us 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Now, finding the der derivative is helpful because the derivative, the derivative tells us whether this function is increasing or decreasing on an interval, and also if it has any critical points such as a maximum or a minimum. So I'm going to continue by setting the derivative equal to 0 to find the critical values. And from here, obviously, 1 minus ln x equals 0 gives us ln x equals 1, and that gives us x equals e as our only critical value. So by using this information, I'm going to be making a table. Let's see what the table looks like. I'm going to have a row for x, row for y prime, and row for y. And the only critical value for the derivative is e. And you know, this is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So from left to right, the numbers are going to be increasing, just like the number line. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the following. If my x values are greater than e, obviously, this is going to indicate that ln x is going to be greater than 1. And therefore, 1 minus ln x, which is the derivative, is going to be negative. So for larger values, va values of x that are larger than e, the derivative is going to be negative. And otherwise, if x is less than e, ln x is going to be less than 1. And if you subtract something less than 1 from 1, obviously you're supposed to get a positive quantity. Therefore, we can put the following signs on the table. So if x is greater than e, the derivative is negative, otherwise it's positive. And of course, at e, the derivative is 0. Now, not only uh, we're finding the critical value, but also we know now that when the derivative is positive, the function needs to be increasing. And when the derivative is negative on an interval, 
the function is decreasing. Therefore, we're going to have a maximum at x equals e. If you replace x with e, then since our function was y equals ln x over x, you're going to get ln e over e, and that is going to be 1 over e. So e comma 1 over e is going to be a maximum point on the graph of y equals ln x over x. And I'm going to show you the graph of our function so you can get a better idea. So this is what the graph looks like. And at the end, I'm going to show you a comparison of these numbers numerically. Anyway, so here's our function. As you can see here, e comma 1 over e. So this is the x value for e. We have a maximum. It's kind of hard to see, but you probably noticed that my function is increasing here as it's going up. And here it's going down. Even though it's slightly visible, you can still uh, see that. And we verified with the derivative. Great. Now, what does this mean? Our function is increasing and then decreasing, right? Making a maximum. Okay, so for x is greater than e, y equals ln x over x is decreasing, right? And you can check that one more time on the table. Our function is decreasing for x values that are greater than e. Great, so here's what it means from uh, our from a solution perspective for our uh, problem. 22 is obviously greater than 21, and they're both greater than e. So since our function is decreasing, then its value at 22 is going to be less than the value at 21. In, the, in other words, ln 22 over 22 is going to be less than ln 21 over 21. Great. Now let's go ahead and make the cross multiplication. This gives us 21 ln 22 is less than 22 ln 21. And then from here, we're trying to find the largest number. So let's go ahead and switch sides and write this as 22 ln 21 is greater than 21 ln 22. Of course, they're multiplied and write the multiplication sign, but they're multiplied. Great. Now let's remember that 22 times ln 21 has a name, right? Well, it is equal to 22 times ln 21 is equal to ln a, and the other number is equal to ln b. So we can safely say that from here, ln a is greater than ln b, which means that a is greater than b, because you can basically do e to the power of both sides, and since the you know exponents, um, one of the exponents is larger than the other, when you raise it, e to the power, uh, the inequality will be preserved. And this means that, remember, we named a and b something, 21 to the power 22 is going to be greater than 22 to the power 21. Now let's call, talk about a general result. I wanted to talk about a general result here, and this is what it is. In general, we can safely say that if x is greater than or equal to e, then x to the power x plus 1 is going to be greater than x plus 1 to the power x. In other words, the number with the smaller base is actually greater. All right, so now we're pretty much done, but I'd like to show you a numerical comparison here. That's the graph, and here's the numerical comparison. So those are the values, and you can see that uh, they're pretty close. Uh, you know, one of them has 10 to the power 29, the other one is 10 to the power 28. And when you look at their ratio, you kind of see that one of them is about 8 times the other number. So obviously, 21 to the power 22 is about 8 times larger than 22 to the power 21. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.